Linear regression is one of the fundamental approaches for determining relationships between dependent and exploratory variables. This video covers several introductory examples for regression analysis in Maple. The primary focus of the video is the use of the statistics fit command to fit a model to data as well as generating reports on the fitted model. The statistics and curve fitting packages contain a number of commands for fitting curves to data points including linear, exponential, polynomial, least squares, and spline. For more details, please see the help pages for either statistics regression or the curve fitting package. The primary focus of this video is to discuss the statistics fit command. The statistics fit command is a general purpose command that allows for specification of linear or nonlinear models. The syntax for the fit command is as follows. First, you declare a model, then your independent variable, your dependent variable, and lastly, the name of your independent variable in the component function. Let's see how the fit command works by doing a couple of simple examples. We'll start by loading the statistics package. That way the fit command is available to us from the top level. We start by specifying some data for an independent variable. Let's call this x. Next, we add data for a dependent variable, which we can assign to the variable named y. So using the fit command, we can fit a linear model by specifying it as the first argument to the fit command. So in this case, we would specify the model b times t plus a. Then as a second argument, we give the independent variable x, the dependent variable y is the third argument, and then t is our variable name. Pressing return gives us the resulting fitted model. We can fit a polynomial of degree 2 to the data as well by specifying that as our first argument. So to do so, we would just add in c times t squared plus b times t plus a. Again, pressing return will give us back our model expression. Now we can get a lot more information from the fit command. The output option is very useful when you want to return specific values from the regression model. Some available outputs include confidence intervals, degrees of freedom, parameter values, parameter vector, residuals. You might also want things like the R-squared or the adjusted R-squared. There's a lot of different information that we can get back from the regression model. For example, to return the standard errors from our fitted model, and we'll continue to use this polynomial of degree 2, we do the fit command, the same information as before, but now we specify this argument output equals standard errors. This will give us back just the standard errors for this resulting model. We can also output the R squared or adjusted R squared values by giving the output as a list. So here we say output equals R squared comma R squared adjusted and there are the resulting values. It is often useful to display the results in summary form. If we add the summarize equals true option to the fit command, this gives us back a printed summary which includes the resulting model and for each one of the coefficients, there are standard errors, t-values, and p-values. At the bottom, you can read off the r-squared as well as adjusted r-squared values. You can also display this summary as an embedded table, complete with more details on residuals. To do so, add in the summarize equals embed option to the fit command. This will give you back a pretty printed table, which includes the same information as the printed summary above. However, it will also add in information on the residuals. Let's review another example. In this example, we will use a random number generator to add noise to a signal, then fit a model to the resulting data. As before, we start by loading the statistics package. We define the noise as a random number generator with a mean value of 1 and standard deviation of 0.5. We also make the assumption that the data is normally distributed. So we say here, noise is assigned to sampling from a normal distribution with mean 1 and standard deviation 0.5. We can use a sample size of 200 to create a vector of noise values. So we'll do a pure noise vector here assigned to 200 values taken from noise. Next, we define a signal. So the following creates a noisy signal by adding noise to the original signal. So we start with a signal here x maps onto x times sine of x. Then we generate the data set using the sequence command. So here we're generating a sequence of values which include this signal 
plus the pure noise vector. Let's plot the signal and the noisy data together using the plot command. From this plot, we can see that the blue circles represent the signal, and the black crosses represent the noisy signal. So here's where we've added noise to our signal. Let's next go through and add a model to this data. So as we did in the first example, we're going to use the fit command. And the syntax for the fit command in this case is going to be fit. F is our function. X is our independent data. Y is our dependent data. And V is going to be our variable name. So we start by creating two lists, X data and Y data from the data in the two columns of noisy data. Then we declare our function model, and it's going to be f is equal to c times x times sine of x of x times a plus b. We use the fit command on this function model to fit the x data and the y data. This is our resulting model. We can plot f and the noisy data together to visualize the fit. As before, the black crosses represent the noisy signal. But what's been added here is a red dashed line that represents the fitted model that's been generated by the fit command. In the final example, we will discuss how removing coefficients from a fitted model can affect the adjusted R squared values. As before, we start by loading the statistics package. For this example, we are going to actually import some data that's stored in a file on disk. The import command only has one argument, in this case it's the location of the file on disk. So here we specify file tools join path of Excel experimental data with base equals data dir. This basically just tells Maple that we want to read in a file that's stored in Maple's data directory. This is the resulting data frame. Now we're actually only interested in these six columns here. So we don't need this time column. So let's just convert this to a matrix that stores just those six columns using the convert command. And now let's get into using the fit command. So the idea here is that we're going to be fitting a model that includes predicting variables for each of these columns of data. So to do so, we're going to do fit of a model, which includes an intercept C, and then C2 times V, C3 times W, C4 times X, C5 times Y, and C6 times Z. The data we're looking at is the second through sixth columns of our matrix, and our dependent variable here is going to be the first column, so the x mat 1. In this case, we don't just have one variable we're looking at anymore, we have five, so we're going to give it this list here, v, w, x, y, and z. And finally, we're going to return this in an embedded summary using the summarize equals embed option. So this is the result of running this model. As we can see here, here are coefficients, their estimates, their standard errors, t-values and p-values. Now what's interesting about using the embedded summary for fit is that if any of the p-values are significant, those are actually marked with bold. So here we can see that the C3 coefficient actually has a p-value which is less than 0 0.05, so it's marked in bold. Now from the above, we can also observe that both the r-squared and adjusted r-squared are reasonably high. However, as we saw before, only one of the coefficient values has a significant p-value. So this is a case where we can start to experiment. We can start to remove some of our coefficients to see if it affects the adjusted r-squared value at all. So let's try to fit the data again. And this time, we're going to keep only the two efficients with the lowest p-values and the intercept. So from above, we saw that c3 was certainly the lowest of the coefficient for p-values. But we'll also grab c5, as it has a fairly low p-value. So we'll again try to fit this data, and all the options are the same as before, but now we're just using two coefficients. Uh, now we can see that the intercept and the C3 coefficients are still significant. Uh, the C5 value does not give us a very good p-value here, but what we can notice is the adjusted R-squared, if we go back up here, actually has gone up in between these two tests. So here we have a better adjusted R-squared value than we had before. So we can actually run another test. We'll just remove the C5 coefficient and see what value we get from that so we don't have that last coefficient. So now we see adjusted R squared value here of 0.974. So we actually see here that having the C5 predictor in is slightly better than having 
just the C3 predictor. So in this case, we conclude actually that it's actually better to just keep C5 within our summary, and we leave that within the fitted model.